This is pre-calculus section 6.2 on the law of cosines. And in a triangle like this, there's three different variations of the law of cosines that we can use to solve this triangle. The first one we'll put down for little a. Little a squared equals b squared plus c squared, which kind of looks like the Pythagorean theorem right now, depending on which is the leg and which is the hypotenuse. But a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Then there's a little bit more. We're going to do minus 2 times c times b times the cosine of angle A. And this is one variation of our law of cosines. There's a lot to it, but remember, it starts off with the law of cosines. And then there's some symmetry involved. We have this letter C, and it shows up again. We have this letter B, and then it shows up again. Letter A and A are on the outside, so there's some nice ways that we can try to remember this, starting off with the law of cosines and then kind of repeating it. And we might use this version of the formula, depending on what we know. We could also say that b squared equals a squared plus c squared, again, kind of like Pythagorean theorem, minus 2 times c times a, this time times the cosine of angle b. The same idea as the first one. We might use it depending on what angle or what sides we know and which ones we're trying to find. There's one more variation, and it's c squared. Kind of think about what we did on the first ones. What's this one going to look like? Let's see, so c squared equals a squared plus b squared. There's our Pythagorean theorem part. Minus, and if I look at what I did on the first ones, it's going to be minus 2 times b times a, and it's times the cosine of angle c. So we're going to use those formulas to help us solve triangles. And the first kind of triangle we're going to look at looks like this. This is the information that we're given. Angle A, angle C, little b. These are the things that we're trying to find, so I'm just going to put those into the chart as well. Underline them because we don't know their values. It isn't necessary to draw a triangle, but sometimes it helps because then we can identify what our scenario is. And in this one, we have little a, we have little c, so I have the little sides opposite those angles, and we have angle b given to us. So if I were looking at this one from a perspective of proving triangles congruent, I would recognize that it is a side angle side case. And the way we do side angle side problems is always going to be the same. And in this case, we're going to start off by using the law of cosines. If we tried to use the law of sines in this problem, we'd run into an, a, a shortcoming right away. Sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. I wouldn't know those two values, so the law of sines wouldn't help us. We wouldn't have enough information. We don't want to go down that route. Instead, we are going to go with the law of cosines. And there's three variations, little a by itself, little b, or little c. In this case, we wouldn't have enough to do little a by itself because we wouldn't have enough information. If I'll scroll back up, a squared equals b squared plus, like all of this, we don't know the value of little b. We don't know the measurement of angle a. There would be two unknowns, so it would be a dead end. Instead, we're going to use the version that has little b by itself, b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ca times the cosine of angle b. And multiplication is commutative, so you can switch the order of a and c. That wouldn't really matter. But this is just the law of cosines for little b. Now we'll put in the values. b squared equals 9.27 squared plus 6.1 squared minus 2 times 6.1, 9.27 times the cosine of 39.6 degrees. So then in the calculator, we'll enter all this stuff, and in one step, there's a value of 36.00. That's what b squared is. So we'll do second square root, second answer. I might give this b at about 6.00. So I'll write that number down for little b, about 6.00. Now on the calculator, there were a lot of other decimal points after that, and it's kind of even cut off on the screen here. Um, but there are an infinite number of decimal points after that. What we are going to do, though, is store that as alpha B because we're going to recall and use that exact answer at a later point. So of the three things we needed to find, we found our first one. We found the value of length B. Now we need to find angle A and angle C. Now, a caution on this one, you never want to use the law of sines to find the largest angle. The only time you would do that is if you're solving a side-side angle problem and it can't be helped. Otherwise. Don't use the law of sines to find the largest angle because the law of sines will only ever give you an acute angle. Instead, 
we're going to try to find angle C because we know it has to be acute. To do that, we're going to use the law of sines. So the sine of 39.6 degrees, that's angle B, divided by the length of B, which is stored in the calculator as B, equals the sine of C over 6.1. So it's just the law of sine. Sine of B over B equals the sine of C over C. There is the equation. And since it's a proportion, in order to solve it, we're going to cross multiply. B times the sine of C is equal to 6.1 times the sine of 39.6. By cross multiplying, we no longer have fractions. One more thing, algebraically, divide both sides by alpha B, the stored value of B in the calculator. And the sine of C is 6.1 times the sine of 39.6, and it's all over the stored value of B. For this, we'll go to the calculator. 6.1 times the sine of 39.6. And we're going to divide that by alpha B. So I'll put parentheses to close this, divided by alpha B. This is what the sine of the angle is equal to. Again, it's kind of approximate. There's a lot of other decimal points. To get the exact value, we're going to take the sine inverse of that answer. And angle B is coming out to about 40.8. Four degrees. So that is angle C, I'm sorry. 40.4 degrees. So now we have two out of those three angles. One more step. We want to find angle A. We could use the law of sines again, but not a good idea because this angle maybe is supposed to be obtuse. Instead, we're going to take 180 minus both of those angles. So 180 minus this answer that we just got, I don't have to type it all back in again, minus the 39.6 that we were given, and we get about 100.0 degrees for angle A. So that's how we can solve a side angle side problem. This is another side angle side problem. You have these two sides, that angle in between them, and you're looking to solve for the unknowns. And I'd encourage you to pause this video and work through the problems. I'll just write up the answers. The first thing you're going to find is that little c would be 10.71 with the law of cosines. Little b is the largest side, which means that angle b is the largest angle. That means it might be obtuse. Don't use the law of sines to find it. Instead, use the law of sines to find angle a at 48.6 degrees. Then take 180 minus both of those, and you're left with angle b at about 89.4 degrees. Next up is a side, side, side example. And you could draw this triangle, but I can see from the given already that we have all three sides. I don't have to match up to see where the angles are at. So we have all three sides of this triangle. We're trying to figure out what's the measurement of angle A, the measurement of angle B, and what's the measurement of angle C. Law of sines, we don't have enough information. So we're going to go for the law of cosines. Do not use the law of sines to find the largest angle. When you take the sine inverse on a calculator, the calculator will only ever give you an acute angle. However, the largest angle might be obtuse. And the nice thing about the law of cosines is that even though it's the more complicated formula, the law of cosines will tell you that the angle is obtuse if it's supposed to be obtuse. So as I look at these three sides, I see that little b is the largest side, which means angle b is the largest angle. So I'm going to use law of cosines first to find angle b. So it's going to be the law of cosines example where b squared is the one by itself. b squared equals a squared plus c squared. There's our Pythagorean theorem part, minus 2 times c times a, using those letters again, times the cosine of b. Plugging in the numbers, 11 squared equals 3 squared plus 9 squared minus 2, 9 times 3 times the cosine of b. And what I see in this is that the only unknown is angle B. So there needs to be some algebra done to get angle B by itself. In other words, we need to get these two terms off of the right-hand side. 1 squared is 121. We're going to subtract that 3 squared from both sides. We're going to subtract that 9 squared from both sides, so they're both off of the right-hand side. The other thing that's on the right-hand side is cosine of B is multiplied by these three numbers. Negative 2 times 9 times 3 is multiplied by the cosine of b. And the inverse operation of multiplying is dividing. So the way that we're going to get this whole big product off of the cosine of b is divide by that. We're going to divide both sides by 
whatever negative 2 times 9 times 3 is equal to. It's negative 54. So if you divide by negative 54 on both sides, we would have that the cosine of B is equal to all of that. At this point, I would go to the calculator, evaluate that, make sure you're using parentheses where appropriate. 121 minus 81 minus 9. There's the numerator. It's going to be divided by negative 54. And that's what the cosine of B is. So if I go back to the calculator, the cosine of B is this. So then if we do the cosine inverse of that answer, it's telling us that the angle is about 125.03 degrees. For the angle, we always round to the nearest tenth. So this angle B is about 125.0 degrees. It turns out that angle is, in fact, obtuse. So that's a, a good start to the problem. We still have two more angles to find. We're going to have to use the stored value of this. I'm going to go back to the calculator, store this as alpha B, and now it's in the calculator. And as I look back at this information I need to find, um, I could use the law of cosines again to find angle A and also to find angle C. Instead, I think the law of sines is easier, so I would prefer to use the law of sines. Sine of A over 3 is equal to the sine of the stored value of B that's in the calculator divided by 11. Cross multiply. 11 times the sine of A is equal to 3 times the sine of that stored value for B, and then one more step from the algebra standpoint. Divide both sides by 11, so 3 times the sine of B over 11 will be equal to the sine of A. So this will mean we're going back to the calculator. 3 times the sine of alpha B, that's going to be divided by 11. And then we want the sine inverse of that value. And that comes out to about 12.90 degrees. So we're going to round that to 12.9 for angle A. Last step to find angle C. The quickest way to do it is to take 180 minus both of those exact values. So going back to the calculator, we're going to take 180 minus that last answer minus the stored value we had for B. And left over for our final angle is about 42.1 degrees. So C is about 42.1 degrees. And here is our solved side, side, side triangle. Here is another side, side, side example. And the way you solve this will be exactly like the way we solved the previous one. You need to find angle A, angle B, and angle C. And I would encourage you to pause the video, work through the problem on your own, and then check your answers. As you're doing it, angle A is going to be the largest because little a is the largest side. Angle A comes out to about 142.0. Then you can use law of sines to find either angle B or C. It doesn't matter. B is 12.9 and C is 25.1 degrees.